So today's presentation is Creative Studio Applications with a focus on the blank canvas. So with that said, let's get started. Um, you can see on my screen I'm already on the Sawgrass website, rad, ready to go into Creative Studio. So you know, what's, what I'm going to do is we're going to go into Creative Studio, get rolling here. Okay, when you first come into Creative Studio, you probably are already aware that we're going to get the product wizard. And with the product wizard, the first thing that's always listed there under the product category is the blank design canvas. And as you probably already know, we have lots of different products, very specific products already loaded in, as you can see obviously with clicking on the down arrow. And most of the times if you're working with a specific product, you're going to go find it so that you can find the template for it and then build your entire design around the template for that specific product. But there are times where either the product doesn't exist in our selection of items, or it's very unique, or you just want to work without boundaries. Okay, So that's where the blank design canvas comes into play. So that's what we're going to focus on here. So we're going to click Next. And now we can get a drop-down list of the different blank canvases that are available. Now, blank canvases are built around paper sizes because anything that we're printing, we have to be able to scale it to the paper that's going to be used in the printer. And that's why you'll see things like um, legal or mug paper uh, or phone cover paper. So these are specific papers. And, and as you probably already know, you can use them for other things. Just because it says it's a phone cover really doesn't have anything to do with phones. It happens to do it's a certain size that's been created so that you minimize waste of paper when you're printing for certain things like a phone cover in this case or a mug. Okay, So you're going to start out by choosing the right size paper that you want to work with and then essentially you're going to get just a blank screen to work with or a screen with grids, which can be very useful. So what I'm going to use for our demonstration here is I'm going to go with US letter 8.5 by 11. And then I'm going to click Next. Select product color. Yeah, well, it's white. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> but here we get uh, a chance to look at the different options here. It's not just about choosing the 8.5 by 11 paper. It's also saying, how's the orientation? Do we want to do it letter horizontal or letter vertical? Okay. And do we want to use the grids? Now the grids can be very useful. Grids come either in centimeters or in inches. And you'll see the grids here in just a moment because I'm going to choose it. One thing to be aware of, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Horizontal with grid in inches. So we're going to choose that one. Click Start Designer. You see the grids there and the numbers. Those do not print. They're only there on the screen. So they're just there for reference. When you go to print, none of that comes through. So now you have some references to line it up because if you're using the blank canvas, it's presumed that you're, again, working with something that's either very custom or unique or just not in the product list. So having the dimensions is going to help you to set up your artwork. As well, many times if we're working off of something like this, we want to create a boundary. As you well know, um, most product templates have actually a bleed area so that we can set up our image larger than the physical dimensions of whatever it is we're going to sublimate. And that helps us when we print it out to line things up. Now there are situations where our image is actually smaller than the boundaries of our substrate. And in that case, just having a reference line that can print that's slightly larger than the substrate itself, that will give you a visual reference for lining the paper up with the substrate. But then once we go under the heat press, because that reference line is actually larger than the substrate, it does not transfer over. So I'm going to demonstrate everything that I'm talking about here so you can better understand what I'm getting at. Now, suppose that we're working with, maybe it's metal, I don't know, maybe it's plastic, it could be anything. But suppose maybe we're working with metal, and we have something that's um, three inches by four inches, okay? And we can't find the right product within our product list, so therefore we realize that the blank canvas is probably the best thing to work with. So let's set that up. If I say a three by four rectangular item, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my image list and click images, and it's going to take me to the stock images. And I'm going to scroll down here until I see shapes 
rectangles. So I'm going to do that. And you'll see there's lots of different rectangles here. Some have big boundary um, borders, some do not. What I want is a very thin border for my example that I'm going to use. So I see that there's a three by four rectangle with thin outline. So I'm going to click on that and that's going to bring it into my blank canvas work area. And it's way larger than three by four as you can see. So I'm just going to resize it and bring it down. Now remember, if my item was actually three inches by four inches that I wanted to sublimate onto, ideally I'm going to make this image here into a template to help me line things up. And therefore, I want to make sure that the boundaries of my template are slightly larger than the three by four substrate. So using the actual ruler here, you can see that this is a little bit taller, probably too much taller. And so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And so it's a little bit taller and a little bit wider than true 3x4. Okay? So what that means is that if I was to print this particular item, we would get a gray box with a black outline, but the black outline is slightly larger than the substrate. So when we're mating the two up, we can see it pretty well. Okay, well, most of the time we don't want that gray in there, do we? So let's just get rid of that so all we have is the black outline. So I'm going to select by clicking on that particular item that I put up here, and I'm going to go to the gray box, and I'm going to turn that to white. And now if I was to just go and straight print this right now all by itself, the only thing I would print would be that black outline all the way around. Well, that doesn't do me much good because I need to have something in there. So let's choose an image. You, you would obviously have some artwork from your customer or whatnot, but I'm going to work out of our uh, stock templates for artwork and choose something to demonstrate here. So I'm going to go to templates, and we're going to go down to, I think we're going to use sports, maybe American football. And I'm going to use the Wooster Booster Club. Now, I said Wooster, but if you're actually up, you know, in Massachusetts, maybe you would pronounce that differently, kind of like Wista. But that's not how you spell Wista up there by Boston. Just throwing that out, okay? Traveling around too much. Here too many accents. That was a southern Boston. Kind of scary, right? Okay, no comments. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. And... There you see it's way too big. And what I'm going to do is I want to shrink the whole thing down. Now these are made up of, of individual components. So if I start clicking around, um, I could select just the lettering here, just the football, whatever. I want to make sure everything's selected together so I can shrink it down as one unit. So I'm going to click Select All to make sure everything is selected there. And I'm going to reduce it down. Now, something very interesting just happened here. That gray box I had is gone. Okay. So what's going on with that? Hmm, well, I did that on purpose. Because depending on how you sequence things, when you bring new things in, you may lose what was there to begin with. So what we had here was we had started out with an image and put it up here, which was our, our box, our 3 by 4 box. And then we brought in the art template on top of that, and the box actually disappeared. So the reality is we should have done this in reverse order. If we want to use an art template, bring in that art template first. I know, it's just part of the system. That's why I'm showing it to you. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and just place it over here somewhere, and I'll set up the sizing for it in just a moment. Okay. Now, let's go back and bring in that box again, and this time it's going to work. So we're going to go to Image, and we're going to hit our down arrow. We're going to go down to Shapes, Rectangles. There we go. And we were using that 3 by 4 so I'm going to quickly go down, select 3 by 4 within outline. And again, I'm going to bring this in and size it up for our purposes. And we'll make it slightly larger there. Eh, make it a little bit larger. Why not? There we go. Okay. Now, you notice when I brought in this image, after bringing in the template that did not affect that art template. So there is a sequence of how you have to do things, okay? All right, so now we have this in place, and this is now what we've created is basically a product template, the outlines for our product, which is three by four. Now I want to take the artwork and place it over here. Now to make sure that I get the artwork, remember I told you it's actually made up of different pieces. If you just select right now, like, you know, you thought you were selecting the artwork <laughs> and moved it over, that's what you're going to get, right? So if I actually do select all, it's going to take 
everything on the screen. So I don't want to use that. But I can actually click and drag down from a corner and just select all the pieces that make that up. Okay, so now they're all selected. I can move this in as one unit and it actually appears to fit without me having to do any other resizing. How do you like that? Okay. Oh, well, what happened now? Um, once I placed it and clicked outside, it disappeared. It didn't really disappear. In this case, it's a layering issue. And this is built, the, the different components of that graphic are in different layers. And then the rectangle itself is another layer. So what happened was the artwork, because it came in first, is the lower levels or layers. And the gray box, because it came in last, is the top layer. So everything is just behind the box. So the way we're going to take care of that is we're going to go over here and click on the box and go to object. And we're just going to start moving the box down. And what we're doing is we're just moving it down by layer. And you can actually see it was moving down here back behind everything. So now the box is the bottom layer and all the artwork is the top layers. So now we can clearly see everything in there. Now if we don't want that gray box, remember, we can make it white. And this way when I go to print it, What's going to happen is that black boundary is going to print. I made it slightly larger than 3 by 4, so it should be larger than that substrate. It's going to print as well as the image. gives us a reference with that rectangle. Line everything up. Go to sublimate it. Um, but the, paper, the line will not transfer to the item because the line is bigger than the substrate. Okay, follow me on that. Now, I will tell you, if you do many webinars with me, especially if we do artwork, I like full bleed which means background color that completely fills or covers the item. I just think it's a lot more interesting, okay? And we saw the gray. Maybe the gray was the wrong color, but we can go back and select that rectangle there in the background, and maybe there's a different color that makes sense, okay? And, you know, that actually adds to it. And the actual artwork for this particular template, you can see it has sort of a white shadowing effect in there, so it actually looks pretty good. Uh, so the reality is... I think that the final product looks a lot nicer when we have a full bleed in the background. So I'll always put, you know, background bleeds wherever I possibly can. So now we've got one set up. Well, we don't want to go out and just print one on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. We want to print as many as we can. So how do we gang these images up to maximize our printing output? So what I'm going to do here is uh, just click select all, and it selects every element of the art on the screen when I do that. So I hit select all. And it selected the rectangle as well as the artwork. I'm going to go to Object, and I'm going to go to Duplicate. And it's going to duplicate it. And then we're just going to slide it over here to where there's some white area. And we can do that whole rendition again. When I do Select All again, it's going to select everything, not just the first one. It selected both. I'm going to do the same thing here. Go to Duplicate. And it's going to duplicate both. And I'll slide them into wherever I need them. And now we would be ready to print. So there we're going to print out four of those uh, on one sheet of paper to fit whatever that custom product was. So that in a nutshell is what the blank canvas really is all about. It gives us a blank area to work with. comes in a lot of different sizes, as I was mentioning earlier, all the way up to a 13 by 19. So lots of different things you can work with there. And this becomes a really nice solution when you're working with non-traditional products or, or whatnot. And, you know, we get calls for that type of thing all the time. Now, of course, I happen to find a rectangle that worked for me and this, that, and the other. But there's a lot of different shapes in there. So when you go into the image files, uh, there's lots of different shapes that can help you out with finding and setting up maybe some custom products as far as trying to create your own template. You don't have to have the template. I mean, the, the, the template that I created with that rectangle, just all that does is help me line things up when I go to print. That's all it was there for, to be honest. Uh, that was the main purpose. But you can a lot of times do this in print where you're just printing the pure images. A lot of times, for example, you're going to do shirt image. You just don't feel like pulling up the shirt but for whatever reason. You just use this for all that. Uh, but look, looking down here at all the different shapes that we have, uh, you can see we got triangles, we have shields, um, and, and a lot of different things. And I always encourage you to um, look closely at everything in there because we add more stuff all the time. 
So just because it wasn't there yesterday doesn't mean it's not there today. Okay, it's just something to think about. Does the system have monogram fonts available? There's only a limited number of monogram fonts uh, currently in the system. And monograms are not applied as so much as a pure font. It's more applied as a function. Um, so let me clear all this out of here real quick. So you would go under templates and you would choose monogram. And you see all that's all we have right now is we have a diamond, we have an oval, uh, and then we have the round. Um, if, you, if you choose it, the only font that's available in it is what came with it because they had to program each letter of the font in three different layouts. So currently that's all that's there. Uh, will there be more? Probably so, but that's currently what's um, in the system. Are updates such as new templates or images added automatically? Yes. Well, we, yes, they're definitely added automatically. And the reason I hesitate is because there's actually a person who's creating that, uh, and then she's adding them in. But it's automatically added to whatever you're using. That's the benefit of an online design system that we are able to make changes pretty much every night. Changes or additions are, are made so that it's expanding the libraries and whatnot. So um, if you didn't have an online system, you would have to download each new change to update the one that was on your hard drive. So those are definitely getting put in on a regular basis. Um, usually mostly artwork right now. Okay. So it's you know adding more images in, adding more templates in, and adding more products as well. So um, those things will be changing from time to time. So that pretty much covers the blank canvas. It's, it's not very difficult to use at all. Uh, actually, the whole program is very easy to use when you go and start playing with it. But blank canvas is a really good tool for certain situations. But if you're like me, you always go and look for that product first because with a product, you're actually working to the specific product. Someone else has already figured out all the math of making all the boundaries line up the right way. And all you have to do is work with your artwork and plug it in. So that's why I like our products, but I love having the blank canvas tool as well because it certainly helps me out when I run into some challenges with some unique stuff. Okay, so do we have additional questions?